It's Hall of Fame week for Major League Baseball with the players getting announced that will get in this year. So we'll be talking about that as well as who I think should get in. What is Andrew Jones' case for the Hall of Fame? And got some Marcel Ozuna news as well from the Dominican League. So we're talking about all of that on Monday's episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. This is Stacey Gotsoulias, DC Lundberg, Ryan Finkelstein, Taylor Blake Ward, host of Locked On Yankees, Locked On Mariners, Locked On Mets, Locked On Angels, and you're listening to Locked On Braves. Locked On Braves. Locked On Braves. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, where we are talking about your favorite teams every single day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani, and you can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. You can check out my bio there to see where I am covering the game of baseball, including the Atlanta Braves over at tomahawktake.com. Also covered AA South for Prospects 1500 and the Birmingham Barons for Southside Sox. So if it's baseball in the Southeast, I pretty much got you covered down here. Make sure you are also following the podcast on Twitter at LockedOn underscore Braves. Got a lot of great follows over the weekend watching the Tennessee Titans game. Unfortunate finish there. What a weekend it was in the NFL. Just some amazing games there. That was a lot of Fun to watch, but I appreciate all the, the follows on Twitter and the interaction watching that game together. All my Braves and Titans fans out there. Again, sorry for that that rough loss there, um, but did enjoy the interactions. So make sure you are following us on Twitter. Continue to send in those questions, comments, feedbacks on the podcast, trying to grow our interaction there on Twitter. And if you are watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. A lot of great interaction on YouTube as well. In fact, I just want to stop and I want to compliment the listeners out there and those in the comments section. Some really great comments on Friday's YouTube video. And one thing I want to just you know commend all of you on is that we're not always going to agree and that's okay. But it's always good to hear a different perspective on things. And I really appreciated the comments that people that even didn't agree with me, whether it was the, the Bumgarner trade proposal, which I, I wasn't fully on board with that trade, just to be clear. There had to be some some other things that happened in that proposal. but Or whether it's the Marcelo Zuna situation, which again, I've noted, I, I understand that's a, you know, a situation where everybody's not going to agree on it. But I really appreciate the comments where you know you weren't just blasting me for not agreeing with me. You're having a discussion, and that is great. And, and I'm so glad to have listeners like that who are open to just having a discussion and hearing different points of view. And that's that's what we should be doing as fans, as as people, as human beings, you know, being able to have a discussion and and be open-minded. We're not always going to agree on a certain topic, a certain situation, and that's okay. And that's where we should have a discussion. So I really appreciate that. One to comment, uh, all of you who were in the comment section. I know that there's others out there as well. Those on Twitter as well. We we're having a discussion too. That's really great. And that's what we should be doing. And that's what we should be doing as fans, as people, is having a conversation. And that's what I try to do on this podcast is open it up to have a conversation, to allow you to look at things differently. You know, if you're always just looking at the point of view that you agree with, you know, that's not helping you expand as a fan as a person. So I, I really want to commend you again. Appreciate that. The comments that we had on that, that podcast were really great. And that's what I hope to do, you know, on this podcast again, is to expand your mind, to look at things differently. We're not always going to agree, but I'm open to have those conversations and I'm open minded enough to listen to other points of view. And, you know, I'm willing to change my mind if I see things differently or if I'm seeing things wrong. So, you know, I, I really want to appreciate, you know, the fans, all of those who comment you know, on the podcast, whether it be on YouTube or, or on Twitter, really do appreciate you doing that and having those conversations. That's that's really fun. That's why I wanted to do this. That's why I wanted to do a podcast is to be able to talk to other fans, get other perspectives and have that conversation. So, again, just want to commend you all you know, on that, uh, the great listeners that we have here. But again, make sure you're following us on Twitter at Lockdown underscore Braves. Subscribe on YouTube and be a part of that conversation. Um, so I really do want, again, just to appreciate you and, and say thank you for those comments. Thank you for uh, listening as well. 
And thank you again for making Lockdown Braves your first listen each and every day. Today on today's podcast, we're going to be talking about the Hall of Fame a good bit. I'm going to make my case for Andrew Jones. Also going to give you my ballot and give some of your ballots as well that were submitted on Twitter. And then we're going to wrap up the episode talking about Marcel Ozuna and his performance in the Dominican Winter League. So let's start with the case for Andrew Jones to be in the Hall of Fame. For me, it's a no-brainer. Look, I grew up watching the Braves in the 90s, you know, early 2000s. I think anybody who watched those teams and watched Andrew Jones on a daily basis knows he's a Hall of Fame player. Uh, the things he did in the outfield, we've never seen before. The best defensive center fielder to ever play the game, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion. That deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I'm sorry, if you were the best to ever do something, you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, especially especially at a position like center field. I mean, that is a primary position in the outfield. It's the shortstop you know, of the outfield. And where I always go with this discussion when talking about Andrew Jones and his case for the Hall of Fame, it's, it's very simple for me. If Ozzie Smith is in the Hall of Fame because he was the best defensive shortstop of all time, and he was, and he should be in the Hall of Fame, why is that same case not made for Andrew Jones? Is it simply because Ozzie Smith played longer? I, I don't know. I don't understand the difference there. Andrew Jones was the best defensive center fielder for 10 years. He's the best defensive center fielder of all time. You can say the same about Ozzie Smith at shortstop. Both positions are primary positions. If Ozzy is in, and it doesn't make any sense why Andrew Jones is being left out. And on top of that, Andrew Jones also hit 434 home runs. He scored over 1,200 runs, drove in over 1,200 runs, and stole over 150 bases. So, you know, he also had an offensive profile to go with that as well, not just being the best defensive center fielder of all time. He was also a very good offensive player for an eight, nine-year stretch as well. So let me give you the case against Andrew Jones, why he's not getting the recognition that he deserves or what I think most people are discrediting him for. I think it's because he fell off at the end of his career. That's what most people are going to point to. You know, the last five years, pretty much once he left Atlanta, were not very good. And I get that. And that's a very valid case argument. You also have to remember he came into the league at 19. And even with him falling off, once he reached his 30s, he still had a nine-year run from 1998 to 2006 where he was one of the best players in the game. He was consistently getting MVP votes, finished second in the MVP behind Albert Pujols um, one year. So, I mean, he still had an, a nine-year stretch where he's one of the best players in the league. And to me, you know, to be considered for the Hall of Fame, you need to have a decade of excellence. And Andrew Jones is certainly right there. So, Again, I get it. He fell off once he hit his 30s. Um, you know, that's what most people should do. Um, that's how most players' careers should go. But it was a very hard fall. So I, I understand that, and I get that point of it. But my counterpoint to that would be he was still one of the best players in the game for a 10-year stretch. So I kind of look over that, you know, falling off period. Perhaps some people don't vote for him because of his domestic violence issues. In 2012, uh, he was arrested for domestic violence. So, you know, I don't want to be hypocritical here. I've been pretty harsh on Marcel Ozuna. Not that I don't think Ozuna deserves another chance. My thing all along has been with it, uh, with Ozuna is I believe he deserves a second chance in another uniform. So, again, it's not like I've completely dismissed Marcel Ozuna. I'm sorry if I've given that impression. You know, I just feel like he deserves another chance somewhere else. I, I worry about him going back to the Braves clubhouse, which we'll talk about you know, a little bit more here. But um, but anyways, with, with Andrew Jones, you know, he does have that on his record. That could be why some people aren't voting for him. I know that's why Omar Vizquel has kind of fallen back in the voting as well because of his domestic violence issues. So I can certainly understand that as some voters may be shy away from Andrew Jones because of that domestic violence issue. Certainly uh, a valid and understandable argument there. But... <laughs> Again, we probably have uh, other people in the Hall of Fame already who have, you know, had their domestic violence issues as well. Maybe weren't the best people off the field, but we're talking just on-field performance. 
then you know I still believe Andrew Jones is a Hall of Famer. And I think some people focus too much on the offensive side with Andrew Jones. Again, very good numbers. I gave you the offensive numbers, but some people, some voters may look at that 257 average and have a hard time voting him in. Again, I think if you look at the other offensive numbers, the power numbers that he put up, I still think his offense is, is good enough along with the exceptional defense. So, again, those are the arguments against Andrew Jones. I still think he's a Hall of Fame player, again, strictly on the defensive side of things alone. I mean, go back and watch Andrew Jones' highlight, defensive highlight films on YouTube or whatever. If you're, you know, if you're a young person, maybe you didn't grow up in the Andrew Jones era, go back and watch those videos. I mean, it's unreal the catches that he made, how easily he made it look. Um, again, the best defensive center fielder of all time, in my opinion, and I think that deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. All right, take a break, and then I'll come back and I'll give you my ballot, my reasonings for it, and give you some of your ballots as well. It's a new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good you will want to eat these, unlike the other, other protein bars out there, which can be chalky or waxy or taste like a chemical spill. You want to eat healthy, but it just gets so boring. By now, you're probably like, where is the chocolate? Well, Built Bars are built with 100% real chocolate. Most of them only contain about 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Here's an idea for the new year. Go to all your secret stashes out there at work, at your home office, in the car, wherever. Replace those bad for you candy bars with a built bar. I promise you will enjoy them. Not only are they great and delicious with some of the flavors like cookies and cream, peanut butter, brownie, just a ton of different flavors out there to choose from, but they're good for you as well. So go to built.com, use our promo code locked15 to get 15% off your order. Again, that's locked15 at built.com for 15% off your order. All right, so the Hall of Fame ballot reveal comes out on Tuesday. I believe David Ortiz is the only player that's going to get in this year. Um, that's my prediction. For my Hall of Fame ballot, ballot, who I would vote for, I would vote for seven players, which is probably the most I would ever put on a ballot. I'm very much a small hall player uh, or small hall voter. I believe it should be a very exclusive group. But I do have seven names on here of players that I would vote for. Todd Helton, Andrew Jones, Jeff Kent, David Ortiz, Scott Rowling, Kurt Schilling, and Billy Wagner. Um, that would be my Hall of Fame ballot. I believe Todd Helton, one of the best, one of the best hitters of, of his generation for sure. Already talked about Andrew Jones, best defensive center fielder of all time. Jeff Kent best offensive second baseman of all time, possibly. David Ortiz, the best DH of all time. Uh, Scott Rowland, he did it with the glove and with the bat for a long time as well. I love Scott Rowland growing up. Um, Kurt Schilling, uh, just his clutch performances in the postseason, over 200 wins. I understand why people may not be voting for him as well because of his, again, off the field political stuff, but I do believe Kurt Schilling was a Hall of Fame player. And then Billy Wagner, the best left-handed closer of all time. Um, I don't vote for Bonds or Clemens or anybody, you know, suspected of steroids. And I, I get that maybe he recruited with Ortiz, which I'll get into in a second. For me, they're the poster children for the steroid era. And I just have a really hard time, you know, voting for them. Same with A-Rod, who obviously is on the ballot that, that I would not vote for. So, you know, I do not vote for suspected steroid users. So, let me jump to David Ortiz because that's probably going to be your follow-up here. Look, David Ortiz was in a report where he allegedly tested positive for steroids back in to the early 2000s. It later came out that some of the results of that report were questionable, that there were false positives. And David Ortiz's career really didn't take off until steroid testing came into existence, until there was you know, yearly, weekly steroid testing his career really didn't take off till after that. Um, now, maybe that's still hypocritical. You can call me out on that. That's certainly fine. You know, I've gone back and forth on the David Ortiz thing as well. 
Not only that, he's a DH, and I have problems putting in players, you know, DH closers who, you know, only played very small percentage of the games. But if you were the best to ever do something at a position, and DH and closer are positions in baseball, then I believe you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. So I can understand those who may take a little bit of exception to me putting in David Ortiz, certainly willing to have that argument. Again, I kind of go back and forth on that one as well um you know i don't agree with the notion out there particularly for for bonds a lot of people want to say well he was good before he took steroids how do you know how, how do you know when he started taking steroids and how do you know those steroids didn't prolong his career to put up the hall of fame numbers that he did so i, I don't buy that argument at all again you want to have that discussion in the comments we can certainly do that but I, I do not i do not buy that argument that if they were a hall of fame player before they took steroids they still believe to be they still deserve to be in the hall of fame i, I just don't i don't understand that that logic of thinking so uh, i'm not on board with that at all um, nobody else on the ballot really stood out for me. Again, this is the most I've ever put on a ballot. I'm very much a, a small hall voter, uh, but I do deserve the, I do believe these players were deserving. And when you hear me go down the list, I say, you know, the best at this, the best at that. Again, if you were the best at a particular position, particular thing like defense, I, I believe you deserve to be noted or remembered in the hall of fame or be part of the hall of fame class and that's what i believe um these players that i listed are i believe they're the best to ever do something at what they did and that's why i think they deserve to be in the hall of fame a couple of you out there submitted uh some ballots to me uh late uh sunday night when i asked uh, vt murdoch said he'd put in wagner roland Schilling, ortiz bonds and helton um i don't understand voting bonds and not clemens uh, so maybe you can give me your, your thoughts on that, VT. Uh, but I appreciate you sending in your responses there. Definitely agree, you know, with all the rest of them. Uh, Sam Eichel said, Barry, Roger, Andrew, Wagner, Roland, Ortiz, Sheffield, Kent, and Helton. Uh, Sheffield's an interesting one. Um, I think he's kind of borderline, definitely the, the class of very good. I don't know if I'd put him in the, the very great category, um, but appreciate your response there as well, Sam, and a very good ballot if you're gonna vote in barry again i think you got to put in roger i think that you know throws in obviously poppy and i think there's a little bit around sheffield as well but very good ballot there so please let, continue to let me know if you want to submit your ballots uh, at locked on underscore braves and we can have that discussion off air as well all right we we'll take one more break and i'll come back and talk about marcel ozuna and his performance in the dominican winter league Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website. So sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2022 season. Bet online remains the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so I jumped in a little bit late on the Dominican Winter League action. Kind of annoying. I'm an MLB.tv subscriber, and yet they annually. I mean, uh, it just kicks it annually, and yet they still wanted me to pay twenty five extra dollars to watch the Dominican Winter League on their app. So. I did not give into that, but I was able to find a YouTube stream of the Dominican League Series finale. Um, this is Estralis and Escondido. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Um, so I watched some of those games over the weekend. Marcel Ozuna, obviously a part of that team as well with the Gigantes, um, who ended up winning the series on Saturday night. And Marcel Ozuna was the MVP of the Dominican League Series finale so i wrote up an article on this on tomahawktake.com as well if you want to go check that out get into the specifics a little bit more for the series finale itself ozuna hit 333 with three home runs including a home run in their um clinching game on saturday again that's in i have a twitter a link to a twitter video in that article on tomahawktake.com you want to go check out that home run it was a pretty pretty amazing blast there that he had uh, in 21 regular season games with the Gigantes, he, he slashed 317, 389, 
519 with four home runs. So certainly a successful campaign in the Dominican League for Marcelo Zuna, obviously needing those at-bats after he only played in about 41 games for the Braves during the 2021 season. Um, so, you know, good for him to get his work in and obviously excel down there as he should as a very good major league hitter going up against, um, you know, some pitchers who are either past their prime or those who, um, you know, are young minor leaguers. So you know, I certainly would expect him to, to do well down there, but certainly better than going down there and not doing well. You know, for me, there's little doubt that if healthy, Marcelo Zuna will be a productive player. You know, I, I set up a poll over the weekend asking you that if, you know, putting off the field stuff aside, do you think Marcelo Zuna will be an above average player? You know, a, a 100 or 110 plus WRC plus type player, you know, a 780, 800 OPS type player. And I think about 84% of you said you believe he'll be average or above average if healthy in 2022. So again, I think there's very little doubt that that if healthy, he'll be a very productive player in 2022. I think the DH certainly will help him out a ton, you know, not having to worry about defense at all, uh, just being able to go up there and mash, which is what he does best. So I think he'll be a very good productive player. That's why, you know, it'll be hard for the Braves to just cut him or, or trade him and then watch him, you know, excel somewhere else or be a good player somewhere else. Um, and I don't know. I'm starting to lean more towards that he will play for the Braves now as things go on, um, mainly because I just I don't see a good trade fit out there for them that makes sense for the Braves. And I don't see them just eating fifty three million dollars. So, you know, I'm starting to lean towards that he will play for the Braves, you know, whether you agree with that or not. And certainly you all know my feelings on it, but uh, it is starting to to trend that way. Um, again, the DH will help him out. I think he will be good. I think the only question, and I talked about this over the weekend with a listener on Twitter, you know, uh, it's not that I don't believe he doesn't deserve a second chance. It's not that I don't think Ozuna will be a good player. I just worry about his fit coming back into that clubhouse, you know, coming off a, a World Series championship where, you know, he kind of left the team hanging uh, with decisions that that he made. And I think that really left that team in a bad place, maybe even more so the, than the Acuna injury. You know, Zuna was the the spark of that team. He was, you know, the stir it up guy. He was the the one who who got them going. And when that left, I think that really hurt that clubhouse a, a ton. You know, now with everything that's happened, do you put him back in that environment after they they got to such a good place? at the end of 2021 and won a World Series. You know, that's one of my biggest concerns with Ozuna is how does the team accept him back? How does he look in that clubhouse? So, and the players are, you know, they're adults. They'll, they'll handle it the right way. I'm sure they'll be fine with it. That's just my main, you know, issue with Ozuna coming back into that clubhouse and really messing up the chemistry, you know, that they created last year. Uh, I think some people, you know, saw what you had with, Rosario with Soler and what Jack Peterson, what they brought to the clubhouse, and they kind of want to to build that again. Um, but that you know, that's my main issue with Ozuna coming back to the Braves. You know, other than I, you know, I don't agree with what he did off the field, obviously, but also just worried with how him transitioning back into that clubhouse, what that will look like. But if there, if with the Braves, you know, a very little doubt he's going to be an above average productive player, and obviously very good results for him in the Dominican Winter League. That'll do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast, wherever you get your podcast, and we will talk to you next time.